Well, we got a special show for you guys today, heading into week 15, 15, 15. Bye weeks are over. We got 16 games across the board. So I decided, Dave Lockman with Odd Shopper, to bring in some reinforcements. Some of the boys, some of the fellas, some of my good buddies from around here. You may see us separately, but um, two games throughout this. So make sure to stick around. I'm bringing in a couple guys, maybe familiar faces, maybe guys that you love from this channel, great friends of mine, and we're going to make it happen. We're covering every game. I'm covering 14. They're taking the load off of me a little bit here, covering a couple others that are smash spots for week 15. So make sure to check it out, stick around for everything, and let's get into it. And before we do, the Christmas season's coming up, right? You're going to be spending money on gifts. You're going to be putting money out probably on alcohol, on food, on get-togethers. Do yourself a favor. You know, you're older now. You don't get the same type of wonderful gifts you used to. Do yourself a favor. Collect $150 in bonus bets for doing nothing at Bet365. Now, it's not for all of you. For the other 43 states, I'm sorry. You'll have to go hungry here. But if you're in Colorado, Virginia, New Jersey, Ohio, Iowa, Louisiana, or Kentucky, you bet 5 bucks on Bet365. $100, $150 in bonus bets is coming your way. Consider it a little sweetener for the Christmas season. Five bucks, win or lose, $150 in bonus bets without doing a single thing other than clicking the link in the description or the pinned comment, signing up, and putting five bucks on anything. Take your Christmas bonus bets. Take those, turn it into big money, and let's get rocking on a 16-game slate. Got to be 21 years older to gamble. If you have a gambling problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLE. First up, we got the Chargers, three-point dogs against the Raiders, 34-point total here. I mean, think about some of the quarterbacks that we're probably going to see this week, guys. Easton Stick, Aiden O'Connell, Tommy DeVito's back, coming off yet another win. Uh, Davis Mills probably in Houston. The list goes on and on and on, but this is what it's come down to in week 15. A ton of injury, injuries to quarterbacks and to the Chargers. It, does that not feel like the final nail in the coffin, guys? Does that not feel like the death blow? I don't know how Brandon Staley keeps a job much longer. I, I Quite frankly, I didn't think he would have a job uh, at, on Monday. Maybe, just, maybe, maybe Herbert getting hurt was enough to then be like, all right, fine, keep him around till the end of the year at this point. I feel like if Herbert didn't get hurt in that game and they still lost, got smoked, we were on the Broncos plus three, right? So how were they three-point dogs against a completely dysfunctional offense with the Chargers? Now it's Easton Stick. Maybe in your mind you're going, yeah, but this is like, this is kind of the kick in the ass they needed. I don't see it that way, guys. I simply don't. Uh, I, I think that, that they've unraveled at the seams and the wheels have fallen off. And now they're head on, about to crash into a telephone pole. And this is right before everything catches on fire and it all comes to a fiery end. Sorry, that is a morbid thought. But you get the point here. This is a Raiders team coming off a zero point game. I get it. But look at the Chargers. Look what the Chargers are coming off of. Six points against the Patriots. And then what, one score against the Denver Broncos? They have no Herbert. They're three-point dogs on the road. The Raiders, it's not outside of three. It's at three points. Give me the Raiders laying three points at home. Bounce back after a putrid effort at home against the Minnesota Vikings that ended on the final drive. Vikings and the Bengals, 39 and a half point total. Bengals, three and a half point favorites here. You know, remember last week I said, I don't know what to do with this game, but I want your guys' thoughts in the comments. Well, leave your thoughts again in the comments. Let me know, not just this game, but where your favorite plays are for the week, where you agree, where you disagree, and hit that thumbs up and subscribe while you're at it. It goes a long way, and I appreciate you for it. But the Bengals at three and a half points last week, I remember saying, hey, I'm so tempted to take the Colts because does Jake Browning turn back into a pumpkin? Well, he did it at all. And now... It's either Josh Dobbs or Nick Mullins. Mind you, I record this on a Wednesday, so sometimes we don't have all of the updated information. I think in a spot like this, even with Justin Jefferson expected to be good to go, you have to kind of, you have to, if you're betting this, and it's not one of my favorite games, you'll know when they are, because I'll tell you, I think you have to just lean into Jake Browning. I took my shot last week. It didn't pay off. I think you have to lay in the, lean into Jake Browning at a minus three and a half point favorite. If you can get three, that much better. But right now, the Vikings are an inferior offense despite having weapons. If you don't have a quarterback, you're going to be in trouble. Bengals are at home. They're playing good football right now. 
will buy into Jake Browning for at least one week at minus three and a half. Steelers and the Colts. Colts, two and a half point favorites, 42 point total. I know what you guys are thinking, right? I'm, look, I'm going to give you some ugly plays because I think some, I think they're the right plays sometimes. And you're not going to like it. And that's okay. But over the long term, this type of stuff pays off, right? Um, like the Miami Dolphins beating bad teams at home. It paid off until it didn't. And now two weeks, they haven't. Maybe we address, readjust our process. But through the entirety of the season, beating bad teams for the Miami Dolphins made us a lot of money here on this show, and we backed them as big favorites. Well, for the most part, Mike Tomlin, as a dog, has done us well. And the truth is the Colts haven't looked particularly good themselves. They benefited from blocked punts against Tennessee. They came in and struggled last week against Jake Browning and the Cincinnati Bengals. The Steelers are two and a half point dogs. And I think in a spot like this, you have to back the Steelers. You know why? Because what is everybody thinking? And this doesn't mean the public's always wrong. Public track record hasn't actually been that bad this year. But what is everybody thinking? They're thinking, hey, the Steelers are dead on arrival. Dead to rights. There's nothing left here. But the truth is, when it, when it all boils down, when you get down to the brass tacks, I'm throwing out a bunch of buzz terms here. Forgive me. Uh, they're still seven and six. Like, they're still live to get into the playoffs. Do I think they will? No. But this isn't like a, this isn't a team that has lost 12 games. This is, you know, 11 games. This isn't, they're seven and six. They're seven and six. They're two and a half point dogs against Garner Minshew. And if you have Watt back and this defense gets healthy, that makes it that much more interesting. I'm waiting on this to see what the defensive injuries look like. They have long rest coming off a Thursday night football game where once again, they got embarrassed. I'm backing right now, tepidly, backing Mike Tomlin as a two and a half point dog. And if they get those reinforcements back on defense, particularly TJ Watt, this team could look a whole lot better coming into a game that they actually need to win. Broncos at the Lions. I had a real, t I've gone back and forth. There are a couple I went back and forth on. This is one of them. The, the Broncos are five and a half point dogs, 47 and a half point total in Detroit. The Lions, you know, you look at Thanksgiving, ugly game. You look at last week against Chicago. Can we credit Chicago though? I mean, they've played, it's a pretty, since Justin Fields is back, that team isn't just, they're not sleepwalking through the season. Their defenses look better. You know, they grabbed Montez Sweat. The run defense is solid. They've been racking up interceptions. So credit them. But the Lions is five and a half point favorites. I think they win this game. But the Denver Broncos are a type of team that is coached well. We care about coaching, which is why we typically fade Dennis Allen, right? And poorly coached teams, which is why we oftentimes fade the LA Chargers and it's worked out well for us this season. In the case of the Denver Broncos, however, you're still talking about a team that while you would probably say, man, you got to go back to the Lions this week, and I can understand why a lot of people would, the Broncos just play competitive games even when they lose. I mean, they're, five, what, six and one over their last seven. That loss against Houston, they had a chance at the end of the game, to, and Russell Wilson got picked in the end zone. They lost by five points. Even the last loss they had prior to that was against Kansas City, but it was 19 to eight. The defense has really held up for Denver lately. They've allowed 7, 22, 12, 20, and 22, and 9, sorry, 9, 17, 19 points since week six. So I think even if the offense sputters, they're a well-coached team, and they do enough on defense to keep this in striking distance towards the end of the game. If you can get six, by all means, that's the spot I'm looking for. But right now, I am going to lean into the Broncos plus five and a half. I really think a lot of people are going to come into this game going, this is the biggest bounce back spot for the Lions at home with Jared Goff in the Dome. And I get it, but I don't hate plus five and a half for the Broncos, given how closely they've played opponents ever since the, the last couple of losses they had early in the year. Totally different team. It's two different seasons for the Broncos. Stop looking at them as the team that got crushed by Washington and lost by 50 to Miami and start looking at them as a team that's won six of the last seven and beat a couple pretty good teams along the way. Chiefs and the Patriots. My God, what do we do here? I'm going to tell you, and you might not love it. Be, well, you might you might love it because this is the spot where like, I know sharp, a lot of sharp money is going to come in on the other side. It's going to come in on, on, on the Patriots. It's a 37 point total. I like the under here. And I'm going to tell you why. Normally you would go, 
how can you bet such a big favorite and also like the under? It's like it's it's counterintuitive, right? It's it's something you shouldn't be doing. But this feels like a 17-7 game. It feels like a 13-3 game with how bad Kansas City's offense has played. But when you look at both of these teams, I think one thing that may be lost on a lot of people um, is because Kansas City's been, you know, we saw Kadarius Tony offsides. We saw kind of an embarrassing, uh, embarrassing display of, of of frustration from guys like Patrick Mahomes giving Josh uh, Allen a handshake after that game. It's not even as much about like they're going to come out here and they're going to smoke them. Maybe they will, but I still trust Bill Belichick's defense. It's a good defense at home. December, cold weather game. However, however, I think the the the, the defining factor for me is still how do the Patriots score? Because it's not like the Chiefs have been losing games because of their defense. Quite the opposite. It's the only reason they've been staying competitive. If you take that one game from Bailey Zappi, okay, take that one game from Bailey Zappi and, and, and try and and try and extrapolate that into anything going forward against the Steelers, you'd be crazy to do so. Because outside of that, whether it's him or whether it was Mac Jones, this offense is not good and the Chiefs defense is fantastic. I think this is a really low scoring game where the Patriots are lucky to eke out 10 points and the Chiefs can still cover putting up a 17 or a 20 spot, even if they don't have an offensive explosion against Bill Belichick's defense. So this is a tough one for me. But I, the more I look at it, the more I like it. Chiefs minus nine and a half on the road against the Patriots. The Jets and Dolphins. Dolphins, nine point favorites, 38 and a half point total. I'll tell you what, guys, we had a really nice run, didn't we? We had a real nice run on the Miami Dolphins. We sure did. Dolphins at home, really, again, not, not even at home, just Dolphins against bad teams were pretty much an instant cover, an auto cover. So was the under on primetime games. And now look, the last four primetime games, three and one to the over. Trends change, things change. But if you play them right throughout the season, you're still profitable on them, even if you miss a couple. And we missed a couple on the Dolphins with the Raiders uh, and then against a shocking loss against the Titans. We even teased that down to six and a half and they lost outright. But now you've got Tyree Kill. Did you guys see the report on him saying, yeah, I texted my wife saying this shit hurts. And she's like, get your ass back in the game. But he was saying, he texted her, my ankle is gone. And I'm in a ton of pain. But then the adrenaline got going and he played. They're saying he's day to day. But it didn't sound like they're particularly confident, Mike McDaniel and company, that, that Tyree Kill is going to play. We all saw what happened. We all saw what that offense looked like with Tyree Kill out or hobbled. It was completely neutered. And now you've got a really good secondary with the New York Jets. I know that Miami took care of them last time out and they beat him by a bunch, but Tua got picked off twice. The defense had a defensive touchdown. That game could have looked a whole lot different, right? And Zach Wilson's coming off his best game, maybe as a pro, just taking care of business last time out. I'm going to take the nine points with the Jets here against the Dolphins who have kind of bucked that trend of crushing good teams or bad teams at home specifically, but also even if Tyreek Hill plays, is there any way that he's 100%? If he's not 100%, this offense is in real trouble against a great Jets defense. Jets plus nine on the road against Miami. Bucks and Packers, 41 and a half point total. Bucks, three and a half point dogs. So we, we, we took the points with the Giants on Monday Night Football. One of the only things I got right in that game. Of course, Dontavian Wicks got hurt, so that hurt. But uh, Will Levis ended up blowing up. We'll forget about that one. It happens in the betting world, especially when you're doing picks for every game. This is one. We got 16 games. I have no real take. I'd lean Bucks plus three and a half. It's a team that I've had a tough time getting my finger on the pulse of them this year. Same with the Packers because I could see the Packers and Jordan Love just bouncing back after a bad, kind of expected poor performance at MetLife. Bucks plus three and a half. Let's move on. Plenty of other great spots to get to. Next up, we got Browns at home against the Bears, laying three points, 37 and a half point total. A Bears team coming off a very impressive victory against the Detroit Lions and the Browns. Joe Flacco, put them on your back, baby. That's how it's done these days. Doesn't matter who they got. As long as they're playing at home, they're making it happen. And I told you I got a surprise for you. You've seen this face on the channel. 
many times before. One of my good buddies knew him long before he was at Stochastic.com when we were talking about um, XFL <laughs> theme songs <laughs> on his radio show during the COVID days. Nice. Eight times Shander at Shander Show. And he's got a lock for you in the Cleveland and Chicago game. What's up, brother? Lofty, my brother, man. Thank you for having me on. Now, this is like the major leagues, you know. I'm slumming it down there in the same game, Parlay Street. <laughs> this is like, you know, big time here. I feel like I've been called up, even if it's just to close an inning out. Well, make it worth it, this, man. Oh, I appreciate you, man. The other part of this is like, all right, if you're doing me a favor by giving me this exposure on your VOD here, the least I can do is take a dog shit game off of your plate and talk about it for you, right? I like this game. I like this game. Okay, just checking, just checking, you know? It doesn't have to be pretty like I'm sure what Lindy has or anybody else coming on who may be on here or not. I don't want to reveal anything, but look, I love Cleveland for two reasons. One, because what Chicago just went through, you mentioned it, that was a revenge game. That's a division opponent. That's everything is put into beating Detroit now. That used to be Green Bay, Minnesota for like a blip. But when you're the cream of the crop in that division, and you have a chance to knock them off and avenge an earlier loss. We knew Justin Fields has been playing a little bit better. So hats off to Chicago for that win against Detroit. This is just a tough scenario now to come off of that high into a spot, which is another reason why I love Cleveland here, where their defense, Jim Schwartz's splits at home, everything just points to a better effort and just a dominating performance on defense. Let's talk about the third element, if we can, briefly here. Joe freaking Flacco. Look, the bottom line is there's stability now. And when you tell a guy, I don't care if it's DRT or JF, if you tell a guy this is your job moving forward, there's a little bit of an exhale. We saw that blip with Gardner Minshew. I think the same thing's going to happen here where there's just consistency. Even in their loss a couple of weeks ago with Flacco, Flacco wasn't the reason why the Browns went down. So I think this is a really good spot. You're at a key number at three. Would love it to be two and a half, but beggars can't be choosers. If it does happen to move to two and a half, it's a smash for me. Oh, I can't imagine. Like, who is putting their sharp money on Chicago like that? I mean, it it just doesn't make much sense. Even my I, son doesn't get it. See, you just right, upset well, him with that scenario. Get back on the road. Take care of business with your kid in the back. Browns minus three at home. I love Joe it. Flacco at the helm. Check out all the eight times videos. Hit your boy up on Twitter as well at Shander Show. Thanks, brother. We'll see you back here soon. Joe freaking Flacco. Let's Cash go, baby. Check, my brother. Giants at the Saints, six point dogs, 37 and a half point total. Did you guys did you guys see uh Tommy DeVito's agent on the sidelines? I mean, this embodies this embodies like New York, North Jersey Italians. <laughs> the Italians must love this guy. I, I'm wondering, like, are Tommy DeVito jerseys, if they even exist, is this going to become a thing? like throwback DeVito jerseys, even if after this season, he never plays another snap for the Giants. Like, Jacob, unmute your mic. Do you think that's going to be a thing? Like North Jersey, New York Italians rocking DeVito jerseys until the end of time? He's a new Linsanity. As long as you see a Linsanity jersey, you will see a Tommy DeVito jersey. I think you're right, man. I think you're right. Even if it ends, even if it crashes and burns, like DeVito's name will be, you know, etched in the history books of, of North Jersey Italian culture, New York Italian. You tell me if you're an if, if you're an Italian from around or just an Italian going, this is my guy. Let me know in the comments. Like, are you here for Tommy DeVito? I certainly am. I'm not Italian. I'm Irish. But you get the point. Another game that I, you know, if this was four and a half where it was, I'd be leaning heavy Saints. Now it's six points. I'm just le very light. Put it this way, I'm not betting this game personally. If you, for some reason, are looking to bet this game for one reason or another, I'd lean Saints minus six because I don't think the DeVito magic can last forever. I still trust that the Saints defense is solid. At home, I'd lean minus six, but I still hate betting on Dennis Allen, especially as a six-point favorite. I just can't on the road after a big, emotional, crazy, unexpected win for Tommy DeVito go back to him here, even as a six-point dog. Falcons and Panthers. Panthers are three-point dogs at home, 35-point total. Call it now. Panthers money line. Panthers money line at plus 142 on FanDuel. Plus 142 on FanDuel. And by the way, guys, 
Uh, I mentioned FanDuel because if there's nothing else you ever learn from these videos, even if you want to fade my picks, the one thing I just want to ingrain into you, you know, whether you're a new sports better or you've been doing it as a hobby or you've been doing it a long time, then you know this. Shop the odds no matter what. Always make sure to shop the odds and get the best line possible, okay? Over the long run, even if, even if you're only winning like slightly over 50%, which is good, the more you shop the odds, the more you are going to benefit and profit in the long run. If you're getting the worst odds and you're not shopping on certain books, you could have a profitable record, like just win loss and still be down a lot of money to the VIG, to the juice. That's why at oddshopper.com, we take a market-based approach. Um, I always tell you the links in the description and in chat, we just restructured the price. We have all of our plus EV picks. We're just playing the game against the market. You sign up on a bunch of different books like Bet365, right? And we give you, we scan the market in real time, 24 hours a day, every second. And all of the best plays we're picking off. Compared to the Sharp Sportsbooks, we say the Sharp Sportsbook has it here. We want this one because it's way off from the Sharp Sportsbook, which means it's out of line from the rest of the market. This has to be a good spot. Win or lose, you're beating the market. You're getting the best odds. And over time, you're going to crush. Also, with the new package, less than $1.60 a day, we have our premium Discord with all of our like-minded betters just like yourself. And on top of that, our expert picks. You can find mine on Odd Shopper. You can find Eric's and Aton's and Ben's and everyone else's. So I think you'll love it. Come join the community. Um, we have a great one there and a tool that works to actually win you money the easy way. Link in the description and in chat. Back to the Panthers, plus 40, 142 money line. If you want to take plus three here, I get it. Doesn't it kind of feel like a spot where they can pull this one out? I mean, I don't have any faith in Desmond Ritter at this point. He's going to find ways to make mistakes, particularly turning the ball over inside the red zone. But I kind of like the Panthers here. They're home dogs, three-point dogs in a divisional game against another bad football team that got really lucky earlier in the season with you know, three point, one point, two point wins. I know Bryce Young has been bad. The offensive line is bad, but Atlanta doesn't get a lot of pressure on opposing quarterbacks. Some of the fewest sacks in the league. Carolina's defense is healthier now. I think this game stays low scoring. I want under 35 and I like the Panthers to win this game. I like them to cover, right? I want plus three, but I'm definitely sprinkling, sprinkling plus 142 on the money line on specifically FanDuel where you're getting the best odds. Texans and the Titans. Titans lay in two and a half in a game that has a 35-point total, a lot of low totals again. And I think I have to back the Titans here. It's Mike Vrabel at home against what's probably going to be Davis Mills. Look, it sucks, man, that, that, that C.J. Stroud is dealing with this concussion. He's still in concussion protocol. I don't think he plays. Maybe you want to wait on this game. It's possible. Um, but I think if he gets officially ruled out, this moves through three. I think even if he plays, the Titans can win this game, even with Will Levis. But if he doesn't play, can we take a step back, kind of zoom out 30,000 foot view of what we're looking at here? Because I, I think I'm as excited or as excited with CJ Stroud and Tank Dell, particularly for my best ball shares, uh, as anybody. But Tank Dell's done for the year. Nico Collins out with a calf injury last week. I don't know if he plays. My guess is he doesn't. Dalton Schultz could be out again, and it could be Davis Mills, a quarterback. So then you're looking at an offense that is essentially the same as last year when they won, what, two games? Two games? And they won one game that they, lucky enough, it got him C.J. Stroud, but that got Lovey Smith fired, and he just gave him a big fuck you on his way out the door and handed the Chicago Bears the number one pick. But uh, it, it's, it's inside a field goal at home for Tennessee against a completely beaten up offense that's likely going to be without their saving grace, C.J. Stroud, in Week 15. 49ers uh, on the road, 13.5-point favorites against the Cardinals, 48-point total here. All right, guys, look, you don't want to do this, but you kind of have to. It, by the way, like I said, some of these games, Titans, I like it. Panthers, I like it. Um, Browns, I like it with Aton. I like the Rams. Um We'll get to some more of these games, right? Patriots, uh, I like the Chiefs on the other side. I don't really have much to say about this. If I'm taking a side, it's going to be the 49ers at minus 13 and a half. 
because they're a fine-tuned machine. They're an absolute buzzsaw, carving up anybody that's in their path. I know 13 and a half's a lot, but it's still inside two touchdowns. And you'd say, yeah, home dog. Yeah, but the spread's massive in a game like this. I don't know if Kyler Murray and company can keep up. I don't think they can. I don't want to touch this game with such a big number, but if I did, I'd lean San Francisco minus 13 and a half. Again, we have so many games. Why do we need to pigeonhole ourselves into taking hard stands on every game? We don't. Rams, six and a half point favorites at home against the Commanders. I've, look, man, it, I've picked on the Commanders all year long. The second, how many times have I had to say it on this show? Let's go. They can't prevent the deep ball. They can't prevent the deep ball. So what do we do here? What the hell do we do here when you've got a bevy of talented weapons with LA actually sitting in playoff contention? I'll tell you what we do. We turn to our man, Eric Linquist, my good friend. I do much work with him on the DFS side. You may not think we know each other, but we work together often over on the Stochastic Fantasy channel. And you know all of his wonderful videos here. If you don't, check him out and follow him at Eric Linquist. Brother, the Rams. The Rams at home against the Commanders, six and a half point favorites. What's up? Oh, this could be the greatest show on turf here with Puka Nakua on one side, Cooper Cup on the other. I mean, I'm just excited, but uh, excited to talk through this game a little bit with you just because I think we're kind of on the same page. This seems like a spot where we have some value as long as it remains inside the key number of seven. And even at seven, I'd be entertaining this, but at six and a half, I mean, what does Washington do? to slow down anything that the Rams bring to the table offensively. And then defensively, we're starting to see the Rams at least put it together here. This is a playoff caliber type football team that if they sneak in, they could make some kind of waves in the NFC, I believe. And it's also a team with Washington where like, okay, fine. The first week after they lost Chase Young, after they lost Sweat, like they go out, they get a win. And you, but you see how bad that Patriots team is now. Um, they don't have any juice on the defensive line. And if you're a team that has struggled so badly with your secondary, and now you're getting no pressure on the quarterback, you can't stop the run well either. And Kyron Williams has been fantastic. I'm with you, man. Minus six and a half. We're getting them inside of seven, inside of seven at home. The only interesting part here is that it's a 49 total game. So the commanders are anticipated to score some points. But the biggest question, and you just laid it out, how do you stop the Rams through the air with the aerial attack downfield with Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua? Even if Tutu Atwell's active, you can see that. Dude, I might take, I'm serious. I might take a shot on it once the props come out on an anytime touchdown for Tutu Atwell if he plays, because anybody that runs routes downfield against Washington can score. Yeah, not only that, Tutu Atwell is the only wide receiver to be a thousand yard receiver out of the receiving core at a big power five school. You're looking at Nakua coming out of uh, BYU. Cooper Cup came from what, Eastern Washington or something like that? Absolutely obscurity. I'm, I am I don't hate Tutu Atwell at all. There's a reason they stuck with him instead of uh, trying to hold on to the hope that was Van Jefferson. But I mean, McVay's done such a good job with this team this entire season because this is not a roster that that really got bolstered in any way besides the Nakua addition, which is massive, of course. But Kyron Williams, he stuck to his guns with him. And offensively, they're really starting to put it together. Matthew Stafford now just on a roll. The guys had 10 touchdown passes the last three weeks with just one interception on the other side of it. Well north of 100 QBR. As long as he is sitting there in the pocket and having time, this offensive line has drastically outperformed expectations. And you said sweat. You had Young. Neither of those guys are there in Washington anymore. So defensively, there's just no way that I see them stopping them. Does that make you kind of want to entertain 28 and a half as the team total? Because I mean, that's something right. that I think you put on my radar. I don't see why you wouldn't want to. You know, they, they put up 30 plus against a good Ravens team in Baltimore last week. Now they've got a cupcake matchup. So the question is, Rams minus six and a half. Hammer it. Hammer time. Just uh, hammer it. Hammer. Check out Eric's video Friday, dropping all of his picks, all of his NBA videos every single night. If you're not watching them, you're missing out. Appreciate you, man. Another game I like is the Bills at home against the Cowboys. 51 point total. I'm laying the two points on the Bills. You know, look at this situation. Sometimes football is all situational. It's week to week. If you guys have watched this show long enough or bet long enough, you really know that. Like, a lot of times the things that seem obvious on paper are, are the furthest thing from obvious, right? 
Uh, in a game like this, you go, the Cowboys are just absolutely cruising right now. They look excellent, right? The Bills are barely hanging on. But you know what? Some of those Bills losses, man, some of those Bills losses were without question games that could have, there were absolute coin flips against Philly. Could have won that game in overtime. Total coin flip against Denver. They should have won that game. Just boneheaded mistakes, two point loss, one score loss to Cincinnati. Um, they lost to New England. That was bad. But you, you get my point here, right? Like, this is not a bad football team. They're far better than their seven and six record would indicate. And now they've got the Dallas Cowboys at home. Cowboys coming off a huge win at home against the divisional rival Eagles team. They embarrassed them. The Cowboys have a gauntlet ahead of them in terms of tough matchups. The Eagles just had it. Eagles had Cowboys, 49ers, Bills, Chiefs. Um, I think there was another one mixed in there. Oh, I can't remember. Cowboys uh, twice. And now they've got an easier schedule. We'll get to the Seahawks game, but they got Giants, Cardinals, Giants. Who knows if they get their souls taken by Tommy DeVito as well. But you, you see what I'm saying? Like the Cowboys are going into a tough spot, into B Buffalo. Huge game for the Bills. The Bills are still a very good football team. They made some coaching changes. They can win this game. I expect it to be a high-scoring affair. I like the Bills to win in another kind of must-win game in a whole conference that playoff-wise, totally up for grabs. This is a good spot to take the Bills at minus two. Ravens and the Jags. Well, the Ravens are three and a half point favorites, 43 and a half point total. You know, if this was a healthy Trevor Lawrence, I am one, I do wonder what this would look like. I wonder if this would be three inside of three, two and a half, maybe even more, maybe even closer to a pick em. I don't know. But uh, Trevor Lawrence, the guy is a warrior. I didn't think he was going to play last week. High ankle sprain. If you watch that Monday night football game against Cincinnati, it looked like there was no chance. But now it seems like three different times this year, you go, there's no way this guy plays. And then he's out there. If nothing else, he's an absolute warrior. He really is. But it's hard to back him this week, even outside of three points, even at three and a half. The Ravens are a good football team with a strong defense. And the Jacksonville Jaguars, if Tra Trevor Lawrence isn't fully healthy, it's going to be a problem. If the mobility issues persist, it's a problem. Christian Kirk being out, another issue. That's a problem, right? They just got beaten pretty handily by the Cleveland Browns and Joe Flacco last time. Their defense is showing some real weaknesses lately. Flacco torched them, man. Flacco lit them up. He un he was the, the only way to unlock David Njoku in his many years in the NFL was get Joe Flacco out there against the Jacksonville defense. Who would have thought, right? I mean, we love the Cleveland Browns in that game, but still, still, I think you got to go job Baltimore here at minus three and a half. Unless we get more word, I probably hold off on this one just to see how things are trending uh, with, with Trevor Lawrence. But uh, right now, minus three and a half, Baltimore Ravens on the road. Eagles three and a half point favorites against the Seahawks. This line's bounced around a little bit. Five, four, three and a half in some spots, four in others. 47 and a half point total. You know, I'll tell you this. We, we were on the Cowboys last week. It really felt like a... I thought the Eagles had a better shot of beating the 49ers two weeks ago, even though we didn't take them, uh, than I did thinking that they could beat the Dallas Cowboys. I think it was a pipe dream. And I live in the... Philadelphia area, right? And the, I, I heard people talking. I told them, I was at my daughter's daycare talking to, to some of the teachers uh, and the people that being like, no, we can do this. I said, you guys, your optimism knows no bounds. You know, you got, you got to inject some reality and truth once in a while. And that's the way it was. It was the Cowboys at home coming off a tough loss to the Eagles at the link that they probably should have won. They crushed them. And nobody was, well, some people, but none of you guys should have been surprised. I certainly wasn't. In a spot like this, if the Eagles can't come out and stomp the Seattle Seahawks, they have a real problem. The Eagles weren't as good as they were when they had a 10-1 and record, and they're not as bad as they were with a 10-3 and record. They should win this game. They should win this game. And it's either going to be a hobbled Geno Smith or Drew Locke, okay? A hobbled Geno Smith or Drew Locke, if the Eagles don't make adjustments on Monday Night Football, Things are in real trouble, even if they win out in a really cupcake, uh, a really cupcake schedule in the final three games. So here's what I'm saying: I'm taking the Eagles minus three and a half on Monday Night Football. Wouldn't be surprised if this moves a little bit. They got to get back on track, and I think they do against Seattle on Monday night. Appreciate you guys watching as always. Yo, 
Let's go win some money. Come hang out with us on Odd Shopper. Link down there in the description and chat. And remember, treat yourself to a Christmas present. $150 on a $5 bet for Bet365. Right down there. Take advantage of it, and we'll see you back here for Week 16. Peace.